boys, back again. I'm gonna show you a bit of these 60 horse units here. He's got armor flex on him, but look at the suction lines on these things, huh? You can see with the sun all in here. Look at that. That's my hand right there. I can't even go around it. That's two and five eighths suction line right there. Goes down, and then over there, um, as it goes down, it gets reduced down to two and one eighth uh, going into the um, evaporators down there. Here's our compressors. Look at those beasts. 230 horse Copelands. Very nice. We got the oil filters here for our oil on these. The nice oil lines. Everything in here. There's the piping. There's our suction accumulator. All that. We got our oil separator over there. All our hold back valves. I don't know if you can see them hold back and like receiver pressurization valves in there, the blue ones. I don't know if you guys can get a look at that, but that's what the compressor section looks like here, the condensers and all that. And then here's our electrical section. Just basic again, like the other one, nothing too complicated. Two compressor contactors, two condenser fan contactors. You realize transformer, little terminal boards. Here's our lines coming in. Two pressure controls, one for each compressor, and then just our temperature controls going downstairs. We got two uh, service mates here, each compressor. So that's basically it for this big one, guys. And then the receiver tank. These things are taking a 90% receiver. We got 269 pounds. We got to get into this thing. Real quick too, guys. Um, I just want to um, add, whenever I do a new startup, even though I know one of our guys was here and already put a holding charge in this, I like to go around and check all my service valves, king valves, um, ball valves down there, just to make sure everything is open. So I'm gonna go around every valve in this thing and underneath on the receiver and all that, just to make sure um, nothing is in the closed position. I also like to make sure that all my um, valve packings are tight too on all my service valves or king valves or whatever because we all know that they are notorious for leaking. So I like to always check them as well. So I wanted to show you guys, I started this a couple minutes ago, um, but I wanted to tell you too, Always check guys, like I went around, I checked all the screws on contactors and everything, made sure they were tight. There was actually some that weren't very tight. Um, this is all factory wired. So like I said, I like to check everything from the factory because you always find something. Uh, my uh, condenser fan motors were spinning backwards, so I had to reverse two of the leads on each of them. Um, so they are now spinning the right way. But what I found here, my compressor on the right, this one over here, wasn't starting. And it was saying it was out on oil failure. Um, if you look at your service mate controller here, it was out there on oil, oil failure. And I know there's plenty of oil in this. My oil separator's full of oil, everything. So I'm like, what's going on? Um, if you see your two control wires here for your oil control should be on M and L. One of these was on the other, um, the other stake on here, the other point where it says 230. That's from the factory. So I had to take one off, put it on the L where it's supposed to be, and we started up just fine. But like I said, you always want to check this stuff, guys, because you will always find something from the factory a lot of times, unfortunately. But especially make sure everything's tight. Like I said, we got big, uh, you know, 460 here. We got 75 amp contactors. You don't want to be messing with this stuff. You want to make sure everything's safe. Because if not, you're going to get really hurt, if not killed. So always be mindful of that stuff, guys. Yeah, quick shot, but she's all running, boys. I don't know if you can hear me. This thing's loud. She's running like a top. I'm going to be back here Monday. Not the other one. I don't have enough free on. I only had enough for this one. But that's it, guys. This one's all up and running and looking good. Let's start packing it up right now. Get off this roof. All right, boys. So that was it. That was one of the loading dock units I wanted to show you guys. Um, things are pretty sweet, aren't they? 
those compressors in there are beasts. Um, I really enjoy working on the, the bigger stuff like that. Like I said, I've worked on many units like that and, you know, this whole warehouse that I've been showing you guys, but not this much refrigeration and stuff in one place. You know, there's a lot of refrigeration in this place. So big, big job. Um, and actually, you may think it's crazy, but I, actually, I think th this bigger stuff is, in a way, it's easier to work on than some of these reach-ins and con these little things where there's no room. At least these big ones, you've got room to work and move around and, and do stuff. I mean, you got to remember, all these things, big or small, they all run off the same principle, refrigeration. It all works the same way. Just maybe different components in the system or whatever. Um, but I got to go back next week. Like I said, we're going to start the other one. Um, <clears throat> we're going to check all the other. I got to check all the superheats on every unit in there. Set them. Make sure they're all good. We are also, if you notice, we have um, suction and liquid core dryers on every unit. So we're going to, after a few days, we'd like to, after a new install, we want to go and um, change those all out in case there was any debris in there from <clears throat> the install or brazing or or, or whatever I'm gonna check the oil make sure that's clean and nice we're gonna add oil if we need it and that'll pretty much be it hopefully we'll have this place running mint and it's already running pretty good now but um as you can probably see too I'm all red in the face here the Sun and everything it, it's been crazy this summer I've been seems I've been on a roof every day the humidity hasn't let up with completely exhausted and tonight also starts my on-call shift for the week so We'll see if that brings anything interesting. And if it does, I'll um, see if I can get some footage of that, if it's anything good, and take you guys along with that. But as always, guys, I you know thank you again. I appreciate the support. That I'm, I, I think it's great that you guys are interested in what myself and um, other refrigeration and HVAC YouTubers are doing. Um, it, it, it's really cool, and I appreciate it, guys. As always, like, comment, and subscribe if you want, and I'll catch you boys in the next one.